this is Joseph Coco. I'm at ALA 2015, the annual conference here in San Francisco. I'm here on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process blog. If you could introduce yourself, Kip. Yeah, my name is Kip Muskeese. I'm the author and illustrator of Otto and the Grand Prix Bees, picture book for kindergarten to third grade. Okay. And what's bringing you to uh, ALA this year? Well, I attended it last year in, uh, when the conference was in Las Vegas because I'm a resident of the Las Vegas area. Yeah. And I realized the benefits of, of being a part of it and and also the artist alley that we're a part of is uh, you can get a free booth by donating an artwork, which is a pretty good deal. So yeah, it's, a good way, it's a good way to be in this forum with a lot of uh, incredible talent. So Yeah, so artist booths for those... Um, Artists who aren't familiar usually cost between, uh, at a medium-sized show, two hundred dollars to uh, at a large show maybe four hundred dollars. So you're essentially getting about a two hundred dollar value just by donating uh, a small or large piece of art to the show. Um, so what was your experience with getting into the show? Uh, personally, Becca and I had a little bit of trouble finding information out online in terms of the process of getting into the artist alley. How the artist alley is different than the graphic novel pavilion. Um, how librarians go about buying books, if they're buying for themselves personally or for their libraries. Uh, how do you, I, I mean, obviously you went last year, so you had a bit of an idea of how it worked, but yeah, how, do I you, uh, I do, I how do you do research on the show? Basically? Yeah, okay. I wouldn't have had any idea about Artist Alley if I hadn't attended last year and yeah. talked to some of the artists there and found out that you didn't have to pay a lot of money to have a booth, so. Yeah, because uh, it's, a, it's a huge conference. Yes. Um, this place, I don't know how many square feet it is, but I think it's possibly the biggest conference I've ever been to, so. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty massive, and I'm sure it's not as quite as big as Book Expo America in New York, but it's yeah. still, but that one you'd have to pay to go to, so yeah. this is a good way to to get out there and, and, and in an affordable way, so. Yeah. So. What was your other question? Oh, I just asked uh, how you went about researching the conference. I mean, you said you attended the show, so you yeah. had an idea from that. Uh, that was based on a recommendation or just because it was in your area and it was relatively inexpensive for an exhibitor's badge? You just showed up. Yeah, I just showed up and, and didn't I didn't know about the Artist Alley, so it was good. And I still made a lot of good contacts just walking around, talking to art directors and publishers. And, and there's also... It's also a good place to. I probably spent more money on books than uh, than on the, on the badge to get in, but it was, yeah. it was still pretty cool. Pretty cool. You got some good deals. Yeah. Well, that's what you're there for. You get introduced to uh, new artists and new or uh, new artists and writers. Um. So, can you tell me a little bit about Auto? What was the inspiration for the book, and how did it get started? It started as a small sketch while I was working in an animation at, on the show Family Guy, and and. It was just a sketch of a bear driving a race car, and then I came up with the idea of what if, what if this car was powered by bees, and so that was kind of the idea yeah. that that I wasn't able to let go of, and it developed into him being having a fear of bees that he has to overcome. So that's kind of being part of the story. So yeah, it's pretty cute. <laughs> um, so your book is self-published, correct? That's correct. Um, did you have? Is this your first uh, children's book? I guess I should ask. Yeah, my first. It's my first book. Okay. And um, how do you how do you decide to self-publish? I guess we can start there. Well, I didn't initially want to self-publish. <laughs> it was kind of just out of uh, need. I, I, yeah, it was I had difficult everything. making the connections with editors. Yeah, I had an agent that was interested, and then just didn't hear from her for a long time, and so I had an opportunity to to premiere this at a vintage uh, car show in my hometown of Pittsburgh. Oh, that's great. And so I just decided, yeah. well, I'm just going to do this. And Do a lot of kids go to the car shows, or you were mostly just this, trying uh, to target this the This is called the Vintage Grand Prix in, in Pittsburgh, and cool. it's a free event. It's a family event. So, yeah, there was a lot of kids there, and, and so it was probably the best-selling weekend I've had of the, of the book. Yeah. Um, uh, but... Uh, I need to find a find a B conference next, I guess. I need to find yeah. <laughs> More vintage Grand Prix. There's not enough of those around. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, but it's 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 sold pretty well. At pretty much the places that I've taken it to. So yeah. So you saw a good opportunity to self-publish. Decided to go that route. Right. Um. And how did you, you just did a bunch of research yourself into? Uh, uh, well, I had a friend a friend of mine that's a character designer on Family Guy had self-published his book. And yeah. I really like the quality of it, so I, I used the same publisher. It's called Regent Publishing Services. It's not one of the traditional 
self-publishing services. Yeah. But they really helped me, kind of walked me through the process, being that I was the first time. They have offices in San Diego, but it was mainly published in, uh, or printed in Hong Kong. Okay. And you decided to go hardbound because most children's books are hardbound, or yeah, uh, you mean, just felt like that would be I think the that's most self, justice to the well, book? Well, the word self-published kind of has, still has a stigma to it as not being of a very high quality, so I wanted yeah. mine to be of a high quality that, so that I could stand next to the books from the larger publishers. Yeah. Well, certainly a lot of people are just looking for that Scholastic logo, um, not only for quality, but also just to say this is kid approved. Right. Um, so how does that affect uh, when you're pitching to someone? Do you find that parents are looking for you to prove yourself more because you're self-published, or is it just a children's book to them, essentially? I, don't, I mean, I don't think so. I, I People always ask me just what age it's for, and I say kindergarten to third grade. There's really not much questioning beyond that. So yeah, I think people, once they look at it for themselves, uh, kind of realize that. Yeah, it doesn't matter if, if it's picked up by a large publisher or not. It's a quality book. So yeah, I hope so. I hope, I hope they see that. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely I definitely think it looks it. Um, so, do you have any uh, upcoming works that we should know about? I'm working on a sequel to Auto. Uh, where he goes to a race in Hawaii and race against the volcano. Okay. And I also have a graphic novel in the works too that I'm trying to pitch to publishers and trying to get out there too. So. Fantastic. And what's the graphic novel? It's um, Wilbur? Meet Wilbur Washbuckle. Okay. And that's kind of a, a kid that's stuck in a town that's, that's a throwback in time. And nobody's left it since the 1950s so then he, he's kind of flung into the modern world when he leaves this town. Okay. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about your background in animation? How long were you working in the animation industry? Yeah, I was in. I was in animation for quite some time. Is another question too? Oh, um, yeah. I was going to ask. Uh, um, I just realized. Are are you still working in animation, or you're completely devoted now to um, self-publishing? Books? Oh no, I still do some freelance work for for animation. Uh, yeah. Background designs is, is pretty much what I what I do there. Yeah. And I started out working on. Uh, for Nickelodeon cartoons like the Rugrats and Wild Thornberries, and more, yeah. re more recently though, I've worked on uh, Family Guy and American Dad, and a few other studios in between. But but that's uh, that's my main experience there is background designs. So. Yeah. So not a whole lot involved in the creative process, more just like production work for the backgrounds. Um, right. Is, yeah. Is that why you decided to start uh, your own stories so that you could be? more involved in the um, creative aspects of Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that I wanted to kind of develop more of my own unique individual style and also write stories as well. I enjoy writing. So, so yeah, it was definitely yeah. a way to kind of break out on my own. So Yeah, not a whole lot of writing involved in, in designing backgrounds for No, animation. and in the backgrounds, they don't let you put any jokes in the backgrounds. I've got <laughs> notes from the well, directors. Some, some games do, actually. I've noticed that, but yeah. uh, I don't know about cartoons so much. They, they watch it pretty close, so I've tried <laughs> trying to get some jokes in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I also wanted to ask, uh, are you mainly uh, targeting, are you mainly pitching to parents when you come to shows, or are you also talking to kids and trying to reach kids over the internet? Yeah, I mean, both. I mean, it depends on, like, a conference like this, there's a lot of librarians, obviously, so... Sure. Uh, mine doesn't have a large distributor, so that's like, one of the harder things when you're self-published, is getting yeah. distribution. It's so, easiest for them to buy the book at this show, essentially, since they're already here. But I, yeah, I imagine yeah. your work's also available online, just not necessarily through Baker and Taylor. Right, right, and a lot of people, especially that are into traditional books, kind of frown upon Amazon and what they've done to bookstores and things yeah, like that. So driving down prices. Right. So, um, but uh, I don't know where was I going with that, but <laughs> but it's um, we were just talking about pitching the kids. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so I've gone to a lot of book fe book fairs, book festivals where there are a lot of kids around, and yeah, you definitely um, kids really get excited about the image. Or I've done drawing events where I actually will where I'm selling the book, I'll still do drawing with kids too, and have them sit down yeah. and draw with me. So okay. that's kind of fun to do, and it's just another and way of engaging. You're sketching into the books, or you're just sketching on that um, one. I actually set up an easel and yeah. draw big, Fantastic. and I actually give them little uh, tablets that they can draw on too and they keep their drawing and yeah so like an interactive sort of booth exactly yeah yeah so that's that's a good way to engage and kind of get the parents drawn into so yeah so yeah so you've mostly been working book festivals you haven't done too much um, comic festivals not a lot of comic festivals okay. uh, yeah mainly just book festivals and there's a lot of 
kids book festivals or ones that are just all kinds of books so yeah and there's a lot of those around that you can that you can find yeah so there's um in the las vegas area there's a lot of uh, book festivals in or you're traveling yeah surprisingly there there's there's quite a few kids in town and yeah and in las vegas and so yeah there's a pretty big book festival they do every year and a couple more festivals that have grown from that so okay and would you have any advice to an artist uh, or a writer who's considering attending ALA annual for the first time? Uh, like what to what they can expect to come to the show? Yeah, I mean, I, this is a really great venue. I mean, I've had some of the big name authors and illustrators walk through here, like Tony DiTerlizzi and Mo Willems came by my booth. I mean, that's that's just so cool. Yeah, to be able to just have ju- just have exposure, you know, to. Not only those people, but the publishers and the agents and everything. So yeah, well, it seems like anyone who's remotely involved in the publishing industry is here at this show. Yeah, so yeah. you never know who's gonna come by. Yeah, it's true. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just it's just a great event, you know. So it's pretty exciting to be a part of. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you have a good ALA. Oh, I'm sorry. Where can we find your work online before I let you go? Yeah, sure. It's uh just kipnuskazy.com. All right, and that's where we can find your book and your upcoming books. Um, yeah, there's a link. Do you also do commission work? Yeah, I do commission work, uh, right. illustration, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I do it all. All right, we will make sure to check you out. I hope you have a good ALA. Great, thank you, Tristan. Okay.